Hello, this is Kevin Crane, coming to you for Eclipse Corporation and Doc Origin. If you are a programmer, analyst, or IT professional, you won't want to miss this video. Advanced Dynamic Invoice. Hello, and thank you for joining the Eclipse Corporation. In this video, we will show you a high-level demonstration of building an advanced dynamic form using Doc Origin. As you can see, I have the Doc Origin design window open with my invoice form. This invoice is made up of two pages. Page one has a large header, a footer, which includes a remit to tariff stub, and then a container where the dynamic pieces will be placed into. Page two is designed as an overflow page with a small header as well as a container for the dynamic pieces to overflow into. This design allows simplicity in your data and flexibility in your design, meaning your data will only contain one or more records or documents. Each document will be broken up into three pieces. Now let's take a look at the XML data since that will be the fuel that drives the form's structure. Highlighted in purple is your document or record. At the top, you will see header information which contains data such as customer name, invoice date, and invoice number. These data elements will be defined by Docker Origin as global fields, meaning the data is sent once for each record, but the form can use the data anytime and anywhere it needs to go. Next is the detail information. Let's scroll down there. The detail information contains line item information such as quantity ordered, item description, and unit of measure. In addition, it contains optional information such as an expanded description, special shipping instructions, or hazardous material warnings. There is no limit to the number of detail lines in a dynamic form. It simply lays the detail within the dynamic container until all of the items are exhausted. Other rules, such as overflow footers, can be defined to tell the user that details are continued on the next page. These details are wrapped in a parent node called All the Detail Items. And within that item, there are eight details. Here is an example of one. This one has detail information, such as the item number, as well as a trigger for an ad. Lastly, we have the footer information that contains details such as totals or payment address. So in this case, we have a totals, and then we also have a return tariff information, which includes an address for customers to mail their payment to. Now let's go back to the design page to see how all this works. On page one, we can look at the attributes of the page and it indicates it's called page one, it's a letter size page, and it's set as portrait for the orientation. The static information is placed directly onto the page and includes the header data, form title, and QR barcodes. In addition, it contains a tear off pane which is at the footer of page one on each document. The next piece is the dynamic container where pieces called panes will flow onto the form. Those panes are a dummy pane, so to say, which is set as not printable in the position and is simply defined to show where the panes will flow into. Then a detail header all the details which contain the repeating detail and notes pane within that pane you will have details notes and add item this should be familiar from the data side next continued totals and final it's important to look the, the continued pane it simply tells the users that there's more information on the next page the totals pane contains total calculations for quantity ordered and extended amount and the final pane contains your company logo, your company tagline, a thank you message, and a page X of Y. It's important to look at each attribute to see how dynamic forms work. This pane is a column header. Let's zoom in to see more. This simply shows the column headers and is set to mandatory to indicate that the pane is always placed even if there is no data to trigger it. Next is the all the details. The parent node that groups the detail item panes together called all the details should be set to allow to split since many details can flow to other pages. However, the detail items themselves called detail and notes should be set to not split 
so that the detail notes, the ads, and the expanded notes can stay together for the users to reference. The allow break before simply indicates that this pane can be moved to the next page on its own at the top of the page. And the allow break after indicates that it could be the bottom of the page by itself as well. In addition, this pane is also used to match the parent node in the data structure. This is necessary to keep the data to match up to the form field. The detail pane contains line item data such as quantity and description. The notes pane is used for any item specific notes. Lastly, the add item pane controls the placement of the optional advertisement which can be scripted to show under a specific item type or a monthly promotion. The continue pane is used as a footer when the detail overflows to the next page. Now to understand how this works, we have to go back to this pane, all the details. If you see, it is set to have an overflow footer. If I click on it, it shows the pane continued. If I click on the overflow header, it shows the details header. That means anytime this container overflows with this item, It'll insert a continued on the current page and a details header on the next page. The total pane contains running totals for the quantity shipped and the extended amount. You can see the scripts by simply highlighting the field and clicking script in the field properties. Lastly, the final pane is simply the closing tag for each document and includes the page X of Y. Now let's run a PDF preview to see how this looks. This is our invoice XML file that we reviewed. I'm going to click preview. And here are our results. We have three documents, one single page form. The second is a two page form indicated by the continued on next page and the last is one page as well. If we zoom in we can see some of the pieces we've reviewed. So here is the header information including the invoice date and invoice number and some other header information. Here is our detail header showing our quantity ordered, descriptions and other captions and our eight items. This is the record that we reviewed, and you can see that one of the records triggered an advertisement. Let's look at a similar invoice that has one more advanced feature that uses a script to determine what the logo is and then what the promotions are running in the center of the screen. This is perfect for parent companies that have subsidiaries where they want to promote their logo for their invoices for that subsidiary rather than the parent company. Let's go ahead and do a preview. So here if we back up, the first record is a two-page record with the Conica Minolta logo, a giveaway for a motorcycle. Then if we go back to the third invoice, here we have a completely different logo for Infinite Designs triggered by the vendor number starting with the 35. Also, it's campaigning to give away, instead of a motorcycle, a Caribbean cruise. Thanks for joining us. Check out our other videos to see the other advanced features of Doc Origin. Want to find out more? Just go to EclipseCorp.us and check out our other videos. That's EclipseCorp.us. Or call us at area code 678-408-1245, extension 2. That's 678-408-1245, EclipseCorp.us.